Yeah, so hello everyone. Um, it's really nice to be here today. Uh, thanks, Software Mansion, for having me and for hosting this event uh, every few months in Krakow. And maybe a little applause for organizers, for Paulina and for Kasper. So, so yeah, thanks for having us. And today, I would like to talk about React Server components. But I would like to expand this topic to React Native part. And does it make sense to have RSC on mobile? And what possibly should we do to upstream them to the production-ready apps? But before we jump into, uh, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Shemar Rybczak, and I'm 17 years old, React Native at Colstack. On a daily basis, I'm working on a technology team where I support our R&D and open source initiatives. I'm also maintaining React Native Community CLI, and I love to contribute to all sort of open source projects. You can find me on Twitter or on GitHub under Shemar Rybczak handle. I'm trying to post there. Uh, very often stuff that we are cooking at cold stack. So in software development, there is this principle that you can make something that is good, something that is fast, or something that is cheap. But you can only pick two. So you can make something that is good, something that is fast, but not relatively cheap to make. Or maybe you can make something that is really fast and cheap to make, but at the end of the day, it's not good. Or finally, you have a good product and that was cheap to make, but it's not fast and it's not usable. And that's how Don Abramov started to talk presenting the idea of React Server components. React Server components are new networking layer for React, and with them, the idea was to solve the problem that we are encouraging when developing um, modern apps. So initial, big initial bundle size and sending unnecessary data over the network, all these problems that we are encouraging on our daily basis, that's what um, React server components are solving. And at Meta, they in some parts solve the problem with sending unnecessary data with the combination of Relay and GraphQL. And if you're not familiar, Relay is a GraphQL client for React, but you know, Starting with this tech stack is not that easy. Not everyone wants to use GraphQL in their code base, and the entry barrier is very high. So React team want a solution that will just exist inside React Mind model. So let's take a look on how um, React server components work. So right now, when we are building our apps, um, and I'm, I'm talking here about very simple cases uh, to not complicate the whole concept. We are bundling everything into the client. So whenever a user hits the domain, the new bundle is downloaded, and yay, we see our components. But what React Server components do, they are adding a new layer. They are adding a new server layer. So from now, we can execute our React components on a server. And this allows us to make a few great things. From now, we can directly access files on the system. We can directly make queries or calls to our database from React component. And thanks to streaming, we are only streaming parts that user will see, so we are not sending unnecessary things. And this is all possible to this format. And at first, it looks like a JSON, but it's not. It's React Server component specific format uh, that was designed for this purpose. And it contains things like connection between component, what should be displayed, and where. So yeah. But what with React Native, and how can we fit it into this whole picture? Um, so everyone is talking about React Server components in context of web, because that's where we have production-ready implementations, for example, with Next.js. But actually, React Server components were initially designed for using server-driven technologies at Meta. As we can read on, the, on this tweet from Sebastian Markabesh, who is right now working at Versal, and he's a member of React core team, React server components were initially designed for native. And that's a nice plot twist. A lot of people only think about React server components in context of web, but maybe they make some sense on mobile. So as I mentioned, one of the main arguments for using React server components on web was reducing bundle size. But in mobile world, we don't care that much about bundle size. Thanks to Hermes and its well-thought um, calculating bytecode, 
Up start time isn't really dependent on the app size and it will be pretty much the same for the application that has small bundle and big bundle, thanks to bytecode. And there are various of apps. There are online first apps and offline first apps. And of course, for offline first apps, React server components won't make that sense, though there are people like Evan Bacon who thinks that SSG for mobile makes sense. We'll see in the future. Um, and we'll see on the, in the framework implementation. But yeah, it's really interesting space. And I really believe that later this year, maybe at AppJS or any conf, there will be some announcements in the area. So let's go to the main part and let's talk about the benefits of using it. So what are they actually changing on mobile and why should I care about them? So I have a question. Who's ever here created this kind of navigator? Okay, so quite a few people. And let's say we are talking with our client and we need to add a new special, I don't know, Christmas button. Cool. Like, it requires from us a few lines of code in React Navigation, and yeah. But the problem is with publishing. On the web, all we need to do is to deploy to, I don't know, to Versal or any other provider, and perfect, our users see the changes. But on mobile, it's pretty complex. So let's take a look at the flow of publishing mobile apps. So to publish this change, of course, we need to like create this button. Uh, then we need to build a binary app. Um, and I'm sticking here with iOS examples, so we need to like drag um, Xcode or use ES to build our app. Then we need to submit it to the App Store. And finally, we need to wait a few days for App Store approval and then for the rollout. Yeah, so this take a while and a lot of users turned off the updates, so, so yeah, good luck. But with OTA, um, maybe another question, who knows what OTA is? Okay, so a few people, so I will describe this concept. OTA stands for over the year updates. Every production React Native app consists of the native part and JavaScript part. And with OTA, we can remote replace the JavaScript part, so we can skip App Store review and update our app remotely. So the flow um, of publishing our app with OTA looks like this. Of course, we need to create the button, then we only bundle the code. But here, we, we are bundling, in most cases, the, the bundle for, for the whole application, and then we are uploading our bundle to the server with ES or any other code push provider. And yeah, on next user entry to the application, the new bundle will be downloaded. Um, and with low internet connection, it can take a while. And also downloading bundle as the first thing user, users see is not the best experience. We can make that in background, but yeah, it's great flow, but it requires some, some extra work to do and we need to really uh, be careful here. So, what, it, what, what does look the flow of publishing changes with React Server components? So, of course, we need to create the button, then we only need to bundle our one component, the component that we are iterating on, this top bar component. And finally, we need to just upload the bundle of one component, not the bundle for the whole application, but this small, small piece of update. And yeah, finally our users see the see new special Christmas button. And yeah, that's, that's really great. And with React Server components, of course, the velocity um, is, is, is better and we can iterate really, really fast. And another great example are federated super apps. And at first, this concept sub a little bit complicated, but I would like to explain to you how it works. So here is a nice graph uh, showing an app split into smaller pieces, and we can think of the app like this, like Facebook app. Facebook app has a, lot, a ton of modules, like dating module, marketplace module, game module, and so on. And not everyone uses all modules, and bundling them into initial app is not the best, best idea, because initial bundle size will be very, very big, and yeah, not everyone uses all modules. Um, 
So we can split the architecture to make these remote chunks, to make these modules as a remote chunks, so we can access them on demand. So for example, this booking module or shopping module could be downloaded when user requests it. When users tap the button and yeah, right now is the moment for downloading this module. But here we actually care about bundle size because from the moment of clicking this button, uh, for example, for shopping module, to actually seeing the actual module, it can take a while, and especially with lower internet connection, um, yeah, it, it will take a while, and that's not the best experience. But with server components, we can speed up this process. We, we can make the time to interact with these remote modules a lot faster, so our user can start playing with, with remote modules a lot faster. If you want to learn more about this concept, go check out a talk from our head of technology, Michal Pioshawa. Uh, Michal goes in details how you can scale your teams and apps with, with this directive. I really encourage you to watch it. And let's sum up. What are the benefits of React Native server component? So first of all, we can say that we have GraphQL out of the, out of the box. So we are not sending unnecessary data over the network, and we are just downloading what we need. Second, they're capable. So we can iterate with them really fast. We can speed up the process of releasing our app, and OTA is cool, but with React Server Components in the next level of iterating. And finally, the, the process of creating Server Components mind model took a while, and still there are things that that are being discussed, but they are really well designed to work with client components and with suspense mechanism. And I'm really excited that a lot of people started discussing this topic. There are various of, of opinions here, but yeah, I hope that this year will be a year of the, of the server components on native and we'll be able to use them in production ready apps. And lastly, I would like to present you an example on how we can implement server components into an example app. So here I have Blue Sky app. Um, Blue Sky is a new social media app. Uh, at first it looks like a Twitter, but if you read more about this concept, it is a concept of open social media. Uh, so not one social media app is controlled by one person. Uh, but yeah, and their code base is written in React Native Expo. And you're shipping one code base to three platforms, to Android, iOS, and web. And let's take a look on how this screen is structured. So we can see here a few major components. And disclaimer, this is not how we really write React Native app, but just for the presentation purposes, I, I showed this, this in this way. So we have a header component with some, some buttons that we can navigate through. We have our feed view, that is the main component that user interacts with, with the list of the posts. And finally, we have tab bar navigator uh, to navigate through the application. And when dealing with networking in any apps, we need to care about two more states. We need to care about loading states, so whenever user is downloading the data, or maybe they have like low internet connection, it is not the best practice to show blank screen. We need to show some loading states or indicators. And we also need to care about errors because when there is a bad scenario, we need to show error boundary. Um, so yeah, with some try again buttons. And this is how the initial states looks like. After clicking the app icon on the screen, this is what users see. They are seeing loading views. We are fetching our post from the database. And here, everything is bundled into client. So whenever a user has internet connection or not, it's bundled into the client so they can play with it. This is the experience that we all know. This is all native components. And yeah, React server components here are not changing anything. But after resolving server components, when our request is back and our server component here, feed view is resolved, um, we can also play with it, and by making this feed view component a server component, we are not streaming unnecessary data, we are streaming data, so we can play with our feed really fast, 
and we can directly, from React component, make a queries to database. So actually, with one code base, with React, we can build all universal apps and full stack apps with back and forth front end. And React server components are not killing native UX feeling of the application. The end user experience is the same, but we are just benefiting in, in very, very good things. So yeah, that would be it. Thank you. Are there any questions for Shimon, maybe? Okay, to the mic, to the mic, to the mic. So it's not turned on. Do, do you have any concerns uh, regarding the App Store approval? I'm talking um, about yeah, yeah, Apple, so, Apple uh, yeah. being uh, not cooperative. Yeah, it's really a frequent question. Thanks for asking. Um, so we need to be very careful here. And with server components, um, we are just moving the barrier. And last week, I talked with Dan Abramov, who is one of the creators of this concept, and he really well, de well described this, this answer. So I will quote him here. So with React Server Components, we are doing the same. We are moving the barrier when our React Components are, are rendered. In normal app, we are also making network calls, and also our app is, is dependent on the data that we are fetching. So it's the same, but we are just moving the barrier. And with React Server Components, we are only sending JavaScript over the air, so we are, no, we are not sending native code, uh, which is disallowed by Apple. So, so yeah, probably if this concept will be more popular, Apple will have some problems, but yeah, it's Apple. Okay, thank you. Uh, yeah, I hope it works out. Yeah, me too. Thanks. Any other questions? Maybe my colleagues from school has some. Okay. <laughs> we have some at the end of the, the office. Oh, it's not working. What? All right. Um, so I have a question and concerns about the security, right? Because if you said there we are shipping uh, JavaScript code, um, it's definitely not as secure as uh, just API calls with in worst case scenario, I don't know, be attacked with like middle man in the middle attack and uh, simply send some um, wrong data and cause some errors. But here we essentially are uh, potentially running uh, malicious code within the application, right? Yeah. So are there any measures which you can think of uh, that can stop these kind of attacks? Uh, besides like, you know, classical uh, measures, like, I don't know, probably like SSL pinning or something like that. Yeah, yeah, so thanks for asking, it's a great question. Um, so it's on the framework side, and right now we have no production-ready implementation for React Server components on native, but hopefully when there will some, maybe with Expo, I know that Evan is, is working really hard on this concept, and it's on the on a framework side, and frameworks need to care about this, and probably there will be some tools which will help us um, make sure that we are we will we'll not display some bad code or malicious code. So it's on the framework side, in my opinion. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I would have a question, maybe not about the component itself, but server actions. Have you ever tried implementing server actions in native and how it works? Um, I tried, but I failed. Uh, it's a, it's a really hard to implement. Uh, it's, it needs a lot of um, work in the, in the bundler. Uh, so yeah, it's really hard. Um, but yeah, they will definitely make sense. And we are making research um, regarding maybe bridging Remix to React Native. So we will have like loaders inside React Native components, maybe. Um, well, now something. So we'll see. But definitely they make sense. 